Okay. We should be good. Let's see what we got. Okay. Yeah. I hear it, I hear it, I hear it, I hear it. Stop. Stop. Okay. So good morning, everybody. <clears throat> Thank you for coming out to the live stream. A fiasco. You think it's only been a week since I last done one of these that I remember how to do it, but apparently not. My apologies, no. Um, I goofed a little bit with the uh, camera. I've been using my other cameras so much that I kind of forgot that the microphone was not connected to this one. And so when I went to uh, connect the microphone up, it wasn't working. I'm going to be putting on a filter here, so give me one second. You guys should be good. A little bit more of a widescreen look. So yeah, uh, the microphone wasn't connected, so I was not getting my, my preferred audio. And then to get the stream back up and running was just... It, it, it's not a problem with the software or the anything. It's just that I was impatient and I, I, I messed up. So we're back though. Hopefully the live stream will work and uh, we're good to go. So yeah, hope everyone's doing well. Hope you guys are taking care. Welcome back to another live stream. It's been a week. Uh, a lot has happened in a week. <laughs> uh, the New Year celebration here was outstanding, amazing. Um, too much for my little brain to process, but I enjoyed everything about it, very much so. Um, everybody here has been amazing. Like, I, I just cannot express to you guys how much fun I have here in Cambodia. It's just mind-boggling some days. So, um, and if you are curious, we are back on the uh, Osmo Pocket 3, the DJI Pocket 3. Uh, so this should be good for today. I put on the uh, wide filter and I've got the, the selfie stick extended so I shouldn't have to worry about being in frame as much. Because I usually keep you guys up here. I'm going to keep you out here. Um, and I've also got my uh, lav mic connected underneath my big foot. If anybody's ever curious what this is, it's a pin that I got. It's a Bigfoot. Yes, I am a Bigfoot guy. Uh, there's a uh, channel that I'm a huge fan of. It's called Planet Weird. And it's run by a couple, uh, a married couple, Greg and Dana Newkirk. And uh, they have a, a series that I found years ago called Hellier. And it's kind of like a paranormal investigation thing. And then since then, they've done a uh, podcast called the uh, Haunted Objects Podcast that I quite enjoy. Um, so I've been a member of their Patreon, or, or sorry, I was a member of their Patreon for over a year. And one of my rewards after the year was this pin. So I wear it proudly. You let your freak flag stand high. My dude hasn't been back. So if you've been around, you know that I usually get my breakfast from a dude that hangs out here. And he has been missing since uh, just after the New Year started. Um, I'm assuming he's taken so much well-deserved time off. I've seen that with a few things, uh, a few places that um, have not been open or their hours have been cut, which I get. I probably should probably check on chat too, but I just wanted to get out, get moving. <sighs> Yeah, this is the first foray into video stuff again since ooh, Tuesday. I, uh, sorry, Tuesday here, Monday video. Make sense? Yeah. That was, that was crazy. That was absolutely crazy. I enjoyed it. I don't think I'll do it to myself again. <laughs> Doing uh, four days of daily content when I'm not ready for, or where I'm not used to doing daily content was weird. Is there anybody here? Can anybody see me? Oh, if it's just me for the live stream, that's good too. 
with all the fiascos I had with uh, stuff, I wouldn't be surprised. I'm just gonna go in and get coffee. If they have a seat, I'll sit down for a little bit and get myself adjusted. If they don't, then I'll just start wandering. Because it's still fairly early in the day, so it should be okay. Lots of garbage out here today. I'll try to keep that away. Ah, oh, they do have seats. Perfect. Hi. Hello. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Um, Americano Hi. iced okay. for here. Okay. Yeah, no sugar. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Hello. Hello. Okay, so let's get everybody situated here. Thank you. I couldn't. I appreciate it. Ooh, that was close. It's funny, this, I love this gimbal, or this selfie stick, but it, uh, because it's so sturdy and secure, there's a lot of fiddling you have to do in order to move it around. So it's not great for on the fly stuff like this, but otherwise it's good. So we can do this here. There we go. So, hello everybody. I do not know how long today will be for a stream. Okay. Give me one second here. A couple of people watching. I do not know how long today will be for a stream. Okay, so there has been some comments. My apologies. It wasn't showing up on the, uh, the feed when I had it initially, so I didn't see you guys. Okay, so, one sec. Oh dear God, my glasses are, are over. Good morning, I can hear you loud and clear. Thank you, Tony. Tony, Tony, Tony. And uh, Dave, I'm here drinking a beer. 10.30, in Canada. Oh my God. What do you think? Uh, so, you're being Eastern time zone, Dave. You like the bike video. Thank you. Uh, I couldn't thank you so much. <laughs> Much appreciated. Uh, I got to fill that bike, the basket up with r road trip goodies. I, I definitely should, by all means. Uh, that was a fun bike ride. So I have videos that I prepared before the new year. Um, so I had four videos. So yesterday's the bike ride was one. I have one coming up tomorrow. That's about coconut coffee, I think. Yeah. And then Sunday, I have a cooking video, and then Monday I have another bike ride video. So those are all the pre-canned ones that I have done from advance. Um, good morning, Nightlife717. Appreciate having you here. Uh, so yeah, um, so if you're ever curious about you know why things seem a little like, wait, I thought New Year's was, why is he doing, what's, I, I record in advance. Um, something I learned on YouTube a while ago you got to take care of yourself so one of the things that I do is I will push a little bit harder during the course of like a week and I'll pump out a bunch of videos that I can edit and then I can uh, you know I'll record them so I can edit them down the road and then once um, I need a break I'll have extra videos that are prepared so that I, I, I can take breaks um, and this week is one of those weeks because, uh, like I mentioned, uh, doing uh, daily content during the course of that festival was was a little awkward. Um, Laurel, I, I'm my apologies. It's it's L O R L I M H U I. Um, are you still in Cambodia? Yeah, I'm still in Siem Reap. Um, I'll be here for a while. Um, I moved here, so I mean, I have a three-month lease at the apartment that my second month is just coming up to ending. Um, I guess I should talk about the visa situation and what's going on with that, too. Uh, so because of the holiday and because of... Sorry, I keep forgetting that my bag is part of this. Um, so because of the holiday, I... Um, 
I knew that I had to apply for my visa for Vietnam. Uh, it, I don't need tons of time. I figured 10 days to be ample, and it, was, it would have been. Um, so I went into my agency, and I discussed it over with the lady that runs it. And she asked me why I was going to Vietnam to do what I was doing. And I told her that, you know, I just thought it would be, you know, an easy trip to go and have some fun, come back in, get my general visa, and then go. And she was like, yeah, it's going to be harder to get your general visa coming back from Vietnam because there are specific borders that's more difficult. Um, so some of the busier uh, land crossing borders, because they have to process so many people coming through all the time, that they tend to just give you the tourist visas, it makes life easier. Um, so, uh, she made a recommendation for me to take a taxi from here to a small border crossing uh, north of Siem Reap and it cost me $25 to book the taxi. It's a shared taxi and it's for the day. And so they'll drive us up, drop us off, we go across the border, spend an hour or so in, in uh, Thailand and then we come back in and we should be able to get the general visa without any issue. So that's what I'm doing. So initially my plan was to get the visa for Vietnam, head over to Vietnam for a week and then come back. So now I'm just going to Thailand for a day and it's gonna be a quick boop, 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 in and out and done. Um, which I think is a better idea, to be honest. I, I was working around in my head, it's like, why would I get a three-month visa for Vietnam and tie myself down to only going once and then getting another visa here and then having to be here for at least another month to get the other one. So I was like, ah. So yeah, I made, the, I, made, I made a decision to go ahead and do the Thailand run. So I'm going back to Thailand for a whole hour uh, next week. So. I'm looking forward to it. It'll definitely be another piece of content for you guys, so. Um, yeah, so anyway, I was saying earlier about making content and uh, having things in advance, so. <sighs> it's, uh, it's, it's a necessary evil when you do this. Um, I mentioned too, I have a gaming channel that I maintain. Um, I have content on that through the end of September right now. And that's easy to do because like, I'm just playing a video game. So what I'll do is I will, like on my off time from doing this, I will sit on my computer and I'll game for an hour or two or three. And then I'll get a bunch of videos that I just, you know, edit out and then upload those. And, like I can do a week's worth of videos for that channel in an afternoon here. Um, Cause that's simpler content for me to do. And plus I've been doing it for 10 years. So like, it's just, and it, it's nothing more than me is, I, I can admit this, the channel, it's, I don't make a ton of money off of it. I haven't been pushing it as a, a thing. It's mostly just a thing for me to do for a hobby, for fun. But the best part of it is that it forces me to play games through to the end which is not something I normally would typically do, so. Let's do Okay, <clears throat> yeah. So, if you guys have any questions about what I do or anything, or you just wanna shoot the shit, drop me a line in the comments. I'm more than happy to chat, so. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna lie, I'm, I'm dragging ass today. Oh, I love this tea, every day. I bounce between this and, th there's three, I'm doing two, but there's three fan cafes in my neighborhood. This is the first one that I was spending time in and I love it. There's another one just around the corner that I usually stop and grab something if I'm walking. And then there's a third one that I never visit. Oh, there's schmutz on this. I hate when I see. When I look with my sunglasses, it's one thing. And then I look with my, <laughs> my regular eyewear and I'm like, there's junk on it. I don't think you guys would have seen anything, but 
Wow. That got blown out. My apologies for that one. Uh. <laughs> I'm glad to see that I got this up and running. What a fiasco this morning. What a fiasco. So to do the live streams from the camera, because the camera handles everything, right? So, um, and kudos to DJI, they made it, made it work great. The problem is, is that you have an interface from here that you have to grant permissions to the app. And what they do, what I really appreciate is that it doesn't remember permission settings. So that means that um, you can't just randomly start up another live stream. You have to apply permissions and everything to do it. So I'm exceptionally happy that they do this thing. You just a bit of, you gotta jump through hoops in order to get things going. And then the app that you use for DJI, it works great. So for one thing, if you set it for public, so you're thinking you're making a live stream go public, but it doesn't, it just makes it viewable so that I can then log in on my computer or tablet and then make it go live. So here's the other fun thing. On the phone, I would think you would be able to do all that. But if you go to the section on the website, which is, it's, it's on the desktop site, it's through the studio, you can't access the section you need to make it go live from the app. And if you go to the desktop site, it'll automatically default to take you to the app because they're linked. So you have to go to something that doesn't have the studio app built in. It's just, it's, it's YouTube, being YouTube, it's what they do. Uh, Free Aircon is a thing, you know, MIK, by sure. Um, Gabe, it, it, almost at 10.30 p.m., really appreciate you being on point, bro. Just loving the daily vlogs. I, I love the daily vlogs, too. And it's been daily. So that's the other thing, too. Um, right now, I'm doing four videos a week and two live streams. And I'm taking Tuesdays off for myself. This past week, um, I had videos coming out because of the the New Year celebration. And I don't know if I'll maintain. I, if you see Tuesdays as a day off, what I may end up doing is um, like I don't know. I, I've got a couple of little concepts for things, but I don't know. Um, am I Are you streaming through your phone data plan? By all means, yeah, yeah, by, I am. I have uh, mobile hotspots set up on my, my phone and then my camera connects and wirelessly to my, my camera connects to the Wi-Fi hotspot in here and sends out the data. Um, I get 60 gigabytes a month here for $6 US, so it's not expensive for me. And the vlogs that I do, uh, let's see. This last month so far, I've used up 10 gigs. So. Mm. Yeah, I don't know about doing daily. I, I've contemplated it, I'm not gonna lie. Because it's just one more video, right? And I could just do something short and sweet and to the point, so. I will see. If Tuesdays you end up seeing a video, great. If you don't, great. <laughs> we'll see. It's hard to maintain daily content. I, I will not lie. Um, there's a lot of work that goes into doing this. So, and you would think that it would be simple. And in a lot of ways it is. Um, if I had the routines down and I was more prepared, like, I'm not saying that I'm not prepared, but if I was, if, if I'd been doing this for a while, then yeah, you, you develop the chops, you develop the, the skill sets to be able to pump out daily content. Um, the problem with doing that is that you're always under the gun because you, any, any job I've ever had, you had your weekends off. Um, and so with YouTube, what a lot of people don't think is that, you know, it's like, oh, you're only putting on a video. It's like a half hour, 20 minutes. That's gotta be, you know, it's easy. And sure, it is, but that half hour video is usually about two hours worth of recording. 
and then it's four to six hours of editing. And then you have to get everything done through all the social media. And then there's, throughout the day, comments that you're responding to, and then making plans. And so I end up working 10 to 12 hours a day, every day that I do this. So, um, and not complaining. Like, there's no complaints from this. I'm just trying to be factual and real about, you know, for anybody that's thinking that this is just a, a simple gig, it's like, ah, I can do that. And you can. You, anybody can do this. It's fun. I highly recommend doing it. But um, it's a hobby that you have to devote time to if you want to make a presence. If you just want to make videos randomly whenever you want, it's simple. You, you take the time you need when you do it, and then you go and do it. Um, if you take it seriously, you want to make it into a career down the road, it takes an investment for sure. Um, so there's no spinning wheels and way cheaper than Canada. Yeah, so Cambodia has um, 4G LTE, so there's no 5G here. So I'm on the 4G plan and it works great. Um, Tony, coming from Bangkok, traveled by Giant Ibis Company. Um, yeah, Tony, I did, I did Giant Ibis myself, coming here, and I goofed coming across and got the wrong one. But the thing is, um, and this is nothing against Giant Ibis. If I wanted to book a trip to go back to Bangkok and then come back for the visa, by all means, I would. Um, but knowing that the time of the year uh, with Songkran and stuff, I just don't want to do a bunch of traveling back and forth across Thailand. So I'm just doing this as a simple, like, it, it's a day trip. Like, I'm going to be gone for a couple hours, so I'm very good. Um, Daily Sounds owners are maybe doing things that be fun. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Frank and Sarah, good morning from Butterworth. <laughs> oh, dude. I really hope that uh, you guys have a lot more fun today in, in Malaysia. Um, yeah, Thailand only allows two land board crossings per year. Um, is it two? I know people that do it more often. For me, so Tony, I thought that it was that Thailand only allows to do two extensions of a regular visa, of a landed visa in a year. I, I may be, I may be incorrect. Tony, is this six for six? <laughs> I have so many Tonys here, I keep forgetting who's who. But yeah, I, I don't know the ins and outs of everything. Uh, Frank and Sarah, just checking my man. You get your tourist visa on arrival and then you can extend for 30 more days. Getting your ducks in a row. Yeah, Tony. Okay, so you have been for each one of my lives. That's right. Um, okay, so two per calendar year for... Ooh. Let me just double check. Okay, so I've done one. Yeah, okay, so I've done one land crossing. Good to know. Uh, Tony and Frank and Sarah, thank you so much for clarifi clarification. Okay, so I knew that there was something that was unlimited, so it is the, uh, the airfare. Okay, so that means that the next time I want to go, I have to fly. Not the end of the world. Not the end of the world. Uh, if you hear children screaming, there is a school right over here. It's kind of a tied into the side of this uh, place. That's great. Uh. Oh, they got the AC cranking a little bit here, and they got a fan over here. here I'll show you guys. We'll do a little spin around. So they got the fan, and there's the school over there. This is the uh, the cafe that I absolutely love it here. I really, 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 really enjoy being here. Two calendar year for land crossing. 
I swear I see people do it all the freaking time. So I'm wondering, does, is there boat crossings too? Does that count as a land crossing to Thailand? I don't know. I mean, if need be, I could always fly into Bangkok. It's like, it's not the end of the world, like if I screw up. But I'm pretty, I'm 99% sure that I only have one land crossing. Yeah, it's only been the one. I've crossed the border multiple times, but it's been coming back. Uh, well, there, I know that's not your name. My apologies. You finally caught me live, which is great. Um, if you're hearing a lot of, okay, Meadows Adventures, two tourist land border crossing for year. Okay. I, I learn every day. The thing is, you have to it, you have to understand the limitations of your own self, and you can make errors and mistakes. And I own it. Um, good to know. Good to know. Okay. Well, this should be my last one for a while. But the next time I go into Thailand, I will have to make sure that I fly. I'm trying to think. I know we can get flights from Siem Reap. But I wonder what would be the... I, I want to see Chiang Mai. So I think that's probably when I go back to Thailand, that's where I'll be headed to, is Chiang Mai. But Vietnam is first on my docket. Um, so yeah, the uh, visa plans for myself. <clears throat> okay. So... Uh, MIK, Pocket 3 is impossible to get here in Canada all back ordered. How are you finding the battery life for vlogging? <clears throat> okay. So, um, it's not just back ordered there, it's back ordered everywhere. This camera has been like beyond what DJI expected it to be because it's, it's unique in itself because there's no other cameras that are like it. Uh, and manufacturing them, there's a lot that goes on with it, from my understanding. So, I purchased the Creators Combo for myself. And with that, it came with the general battery that's built into the unit, and then it has an extension battery that I, I use when I do the live streams. That extension battery gives me an extra 60% battery life, and that's what I use when I do the live streams. So if I do an hour live stream, I still have 100% of my regular battery, and most of the 60% extra battery is gone. So. It's great. Uh, for doing my vlogs, I'll get, I put in a 128 gig stick of uh, my SD card and I will get hour and a half, usually, of footage that I can record out of it. Um, then, yeah, I mean, I get, and it charges up quickly too, so I have an, uh, an external battery pack that I can use. So honestly, between the external battery, the battery built into it, and the external charger, and that this thing fast charges, I honestly, if I take a lunch break and I'm filming all day long, I can charge up both the battery pack and the, the camera again for my my battery backup, and I'm good to go. And if the battery, external battery, starts to run low, I charge it up. So I can go indefinitely with this thing and it works great. Um, I absolutely love this camera. Um, Dave thinks, I'm thinking of slow travel between three or four countries in Southeast Asia. Don't know how realistic it is. It is absolutely realistic. Um, so you can get um, Vietnam. There is a, because you're coming from Canada. So this is why I'm just talking about my own research. Uh, you can apply for a three-month multiple entry visa for Vietnam. So that, that's one visa. You can go back and forth multiple times using that. So you can travel in Vietnam and if you want to go see one of the other countries, you can still come back in without having to do a visa issue. Um, Cambodia, you can get one month on arrival with an extension. If you get the ordinary visa, you can extend that if you're over 55, like you get a year for 300 US. Um, Thailand, you get one month on arrival. 
that you can extend for one month in Thailand. So you get two months there effectively. Then you have to leave and come back. Um, you can do that twice in a year. Malaysia, you can get a three month visa on arrival. You can extend that. You can do that twice in a year. So you can do 180 days or yeah, 180 days. So that's just what I happen to know. I haven't looked into Indonesia yet. Uh, it's on my list of places to go. Slow travel is the best travel, Dave. Yeah, you learn the hard way. Frank and Sarah, I'm with you. That's why I set up shop in Siem Reap. That's why you don't see me traveling all over the place. Um, I'm 55 years old. I love the adventure, but if you do the fast travel and you're just on the go all the time, what you're seeing is just like bits and pieces of a place, especially when you're vlogging. You don't get a chance to kind of savor and feel what it's really, really like. Um, so I'm just, I'm taking it easy from now on. So what I will be doing, once I get the, the visa extension, I'm here for the year. Um, each month I'll take a, a, a week or two weeks and I'll go someplace. Um, and then I'll do some filming when I'm there and then come back. So that is the intention so that I can just kind of savor and, and enjoy place. Do, do, do. Check out uh, Muini, great place on the beach, only two hour drive from Ho Chi Minh City or something. Balder, I will. I will, I will, I will. Um, oh, Lace Goose. I just came back from a week in Seoul. I've been in India visiting my wife's family and wanted to add Cambodia to my country to visit it, but I chose Korea because of the weather. Yeah, I could understand that. Um, Cambodia is stupid hot right now. So I, I, I would, um, I think next year, I'm going to go to some of the cooler areas for some of my, <laughs> my winter. Um, I, I think like Northern Vietnam and stuff, or places in the mountains, just so I can kind of get away. Or even just go to the beach, because that'll be great. Uh, Tony Scott, $40 van, Echo Laos from Siem Reap. I'd like to check out Laos soon. Can't seem to imagine staying in Siem Reap. I think because I don't have a motorcycle because of my budget. Um, Tony, I get you. I get you. Um, I'm kind of just a low-key guy. Um, like, I lived in Fredericton, small town, Canada, right? No car, no vehicle, no bus, no nothing. I walked everywhere and biked everywhere that I did, and I was there for 18 months without getting bored. So it takes a lot for me to get bored in a place. And um, so I'm, I know I'm unique in that, but yeah, I would, um, I, I want to visit Laos as well. It's on my list that I will, I will do. Uh, you go to Cambodia in November or December, Lay's Goose. Yeah, good time to come here for, by all means. Uh, MIK, ever consider the Philippines? Yes. Yeah, the Philippines are on my list of places to go. Um, right now, I'm traveling by land. So that's my intention is to get as much land travel as I can. Once I decide to fly and uh, get going again, Philippines is on my list. And then I'll be there for a while, probably like a month or two, depending on visa stuff for myself. Uh, yes. Yeah, the only problem for me with, uh, with going to Seoul is the cost. My, my understanding is it's fairly expensive, but I, I assume if you're only going there for a short period of time, you just kind of suck it up and go and just say, hell with it, take the adventure. Um, uh, Boulder, it's of course not the top beach place like the famous ones, but I think it's great. I find it very affordable and good local food and very good cheap international food too. Dude, that sounds great. So that's the to, uh, Mui Ne, right? M-U-I-N-E. I like off the beaten path little places, so that sounds ideal to me. Tony, yes, slow travel for the win. Okay. <laughs> Pat, you really like my hat. I hope you have a great day. Thank you. <laughs> I like my hat too. It, uh, it's it's kind of funny. Um, if you've been around, you know. Um, so Frank and Sarah, friends of mine, they also create content. Um, if you haven't checked out their videos, highly recommend. Um, they also have my friends uh, Luke and Naomi. Uh, they have uh, a channel called the Two Mad Explorers, and they also do great content. Um, and Luke and Naomi 
called me the Canadian cowboy because I'm from Canada with a hat and everything and just kind of made it a bit of a joke. And the other day I was out for a walk and I heard somebody yell out Canadian cowboy to me and I just thought it was hilarious. Um, so, yeah. Uh, MIK, are you getting travel insurance out of Canada more than six months? Um, so, <clears throat> I have insurance that I, uh, I pay for. Um, my last company that I worked for, I had insurance with them. And so I have uh, outside of Canada coverage for sure. So. Uh, Okay, Tony Scott, I was in the Philippines, lots of expats, easy visa extensions, up to three years, only one catch after six months, you have to apply for permission to leave. <laughs> you have to ask for permission. I love that. The, <laughs> the Asian mounting. <laughs> yeah. Um, Sergeant Preston in the Yukon, that's it, yeah. I'm not a mounty. Uh, anybody that doesn't know, uh, we have the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, the RCMP. Mm. And they used to be uh, on horses. So there's a lot of historical things of the Mounties on horseback. Uh, there's still some areas where they were, <clears throat> where they were on horses, but most of the time they're just in cop cars. They are, I think, they're like, considered like the same as the state police in, uh, in America. Okay, so let's get ourselves organized here. I'm gonna do something smart for a change and, and get my money organized before I start to leave because I want to make sure that I pay properly. On a tip. Oh, wait. I hate these things. <clears throat> these are 100 reels and a thousand reels is a quarter. I have no idea how to do math on these things. So I usually just put them in my back pocket until I have a wad of them, and then I just pay for something. <laughs> but that's just, it's just, it's silly. Okay, so um, I'm gonna do this. Yeah, I think I'll keep these on today. I'm just uh, taking logistics, because I do a lot of goofing around with this, and if you've watched my live streams in the past, you'll know that I do a lot of fiddling, trying to uh, bounce between you know, um, <laughs> cameras, phone, coffee. So, they give you Okay, I'll be putting chat in my back pocket for a moment. So if you're leaving me messages, bear with me. We'll get this. This is all part of the process. Okay, I'm gonna put this back. I'm getting you guys situated now. I'm getting better at this. Okay. Now you guys should be good. You know. <laughs> I couldn't. If I can pay. Excellent. I could. And for you. <laughs> Thank you so much. I could. Okay. Now I'm good. I have my change. I have my coffee. I have uh, everything set. Now we just have to walk outside. Oh, you're welcome. Let's get down by the river. Do my routine. Should be good. I also didn't put my necklace, I have two necklaces on, and I have one that likes to rub up against the, the microphone, drives me nuts. So today, I'm, I've made conscious effort not to have it out, because I didn't want to ruin everything. Because I go back and I watch these and I'm like, I cringe, and I hate it. <laughs> so, oh my lord, okay. See, this is how I, I I'm better today. I'm proud of myself. Um, oh God. Uh, Q 
Keep the 100 notes and use as temple donations. That is an amazing, thank you. I love that. Uh, I draw a credit card points. Two trips to Central Asia in the last two months. All using credit card miles. I applied for a card and paid for car and rental home insurance. Wow. That is amazing. I don't know if you can see that. That's all charcoal. If you hold the pocket three horizontal film towards it limits bobbing. Um, I can't do that, can I? Yeah, I don't. I'm not gonna do that to you guys. Because that makes it look like a, uh, <laughs> a TikTok, as I like to say. Or I could lean it back more. Ah, we're good for today. Yeah, I've got this selfie stick and I find that if I extend it out far enough that the bobbing is usually pretty good. The, um, the other part too is that there is a face tracking that I can enable when I do videos, but it's not enabled when I do live streams. So the AI in the system, I think the computer that runs this only can do so much in any given day. So, uh, so temperature today, what are we looking at? What are we looking at? It's not too bad. It's 91 degrees Fahrenheit. 30? Why is it showing me that? Your, your live video is so clear. Thank you. <laughs> I work really hard to make sure that my live streams don't look like live streams, if that makes any sense. Um, oh, just for a forward view, yeah. Oh, I get you. I can <clears throat> kind of use like a dolly shot. I think that's the term. Yeah. <laughs> I will try that on my own sometime at my cake. Um, yeah, so the video being so clear. Um, I'm very particular and I'm very picky on myself and I, I, I beat myself up all the time. When you do creation, I'm good, thank you. When you do this all the time, um, you're your own worst enemy, easily. Um, so I like to put out the content that I like to watch. That's kind of where I'm at. And what I've found a lot of the times whenever I see um, live streams, that people use what they've got. And I'm not discounting anybody for using what they have. Um, but that's also why I use what I have. Because if I just use my phone, which I did first. Um, I, I saw what a grainy mess it was. And um, my phone overheated, it was a nightmare. And so I started doing research and this camera and my other DJI camera both have live stream capabilities. So I have the Action 4 Pocket 3. I've live streamed off of both. They both do a great job. So I just limit the quality to 720p. I just set up a Wi-Fi hotspot in my phone. It's a Pixel 6a, I think it is. So I have a decent Wi-Fi connection with my camera. And then I just try to make sure that I walk in areas that the signal is decent. Otherwise, I lose the stream. So. Again, it's just, I'm picky, so picky. Um, some would say I'm anal about it, but it's okay. But yeah, it's just something I, I, I feel I need to do, so. Because I like to go back and, I'm that idiot. Like I'm, I will go back and check one of my older streams. It's like, you know, 
for my older videos. I'm like, I wonder what it was like. Like, I'm just kind of curious. Like, you know, I know I had a good day that day. I want to go back and take your feel. And I'll go back and I'll listen to it and I'll watch it. I'm like, yep. You know. And then you critique yourself. Is what you do. Because it's what we do here. Um, oh, Frank, there. <laughs> just about to ask how hot it was today. Yeah, it's not bad. Like, it's not bad. Um, uh, Dave, 100 years ago we were riding around on horse and buggies and now we're chatting uh, real-time video and chat. Yeah. Yeah, I was talking to my dad about that. Um, I'm, I feel very fortunate that I have been in and around technology for most of my life. Um, my dad used to... Uh, work for companies that sold mainframe computers. So he would, uh, God, back in the early to mid 70s. So these are giant computers that would fill a house, like a big room in a house, right? Um, and now your phone is like you know, a thousand times faster and more capable. So I mean, I have seen technology from its infancy in essence um, and the other thing I didn't that I forgot and this I think was cool my dad told me so he worked for a company called MAI basic 4 um, they're the ones that sold these mainframe computer systems so my dad used to do demos of it so you know he would put together the computer and go on a little trip to go to like a a town or something and go to a couple of offices and show. Oh, I'm good, thank you. Thank you, how are you today? Excellent, yourself? Thank you, is this me? Hmm? Uh, oh, you have video. Yeah, yeah, I live stream. Yeah, how long have you been here already, CM Rep? Uh, two months. Two months here, yeah, because yeah. I see you walk here every All the day. time, yeah. How long you stay here more? Until they tell me I have to leave. Wow. <laughs> I'm I love from it. US? Canada. Oh, very nice country. Yeah, love it. Thank you for your visit I, here. Uh, and you yeah. I love this country. Thank you. So, and have beautiful. a good day. You too. Thank you so much. Um, so, see, love this. Well, he recognized I walk faster every day, which I tend to do. Um, so, yeah. So, my dad used to have these mainframe computers, and we would uh, go on demos. And when we had time off at school or something, my sister, my mom, and myself, we would all travel with my dad. And... So my dad used to take us on these demos sometimes because my sister and I had been around the computers. Like we knew how they worked and how they got connected. So my dad's no dummy. He would use us as bait. And so, uh, you know, these guys would come in and they'd be carrying the computer parts in and rolling them in out of this big cube van. And then uh, these two kids would come out and we'd connect everything together turn it on, get the printer all connected up, and you know, we'd start printing out uh, big calendars with uh, Snoopy on it, like it printed in ASCII. And then uh, my sister liked playing blackjack, but I loved the Star Trek game. And I'd forgotten about the Star Trek game. So it was programmed, like it was like, uh, it was all letters, so it was like a, it's like Minesweep, if you ever played that. And you would go to coordinates and you'd be battling Klingons or battling this and like you travel through the grids and you would discover things as you went through. And it was all text-based, uh, but I was the first person to ever beat that game <laughs> as a kid. And I forgot all about that, my dad told me about it. He goes, yeah, you're the first one to beat that game. So uh, that was fun. So yeah, I'm a nerd. Um, should have told him to sub. <laughs> Frank, I don't do that. You know me. Uh, Keith, in a bar in Anchorage, no single people are talking buried in a phone. Oh my God. That I don't miss, man. That, that was everywhere in Canada when I was there. It's like you go out and it's like everybody's just like, you know, you're on the bus. You're doing anything, you're going out for dinner, you know, and everybody's on their fucking phones. 
mind you, I'm kind of on my phone, but I'm just trying to keep up with chat. But you notice, I try to put it down as much as possible. Um, yeah, I'm okay. Try that in Toronto, you would have to bleep out all the swearing. Friendly people there. Yeah. And that's it. Um, so, you know, being Canadian, we're considered very friendly and nice and polite. And, you know, in North America, we're considered very friendly people. And I've taken that everywhere I go. I'm like, yeah, I'm Canadian. We're friendly. We're good, good folk to, to chat with. And, you know, we're very friendly. And I get to Southeast Asia. And I'm like, yeah, we're not friendly in comparison at all. Like, the people here are just other level. Thailand was one thing, Cambodia is another. But both are just, it's just, you have to be here, you have to experience it to kind of get an understanding for how amazing a uh, place this is. And uh, but again, I'm not talking just Cambodia. Just Southeast Asia for the places I've been. Yeah, that's two countries. But changed my outlook like 100%. Um, I was uh, I was not happy back home in Canada at all. Uh, depressed, fat, <laughs> very fat. Uh, the depression led into eating more, so I became more fat. Um, I've lost over 50 pounds since I got here in five months, four months, so five months, four months. Um, and I'm hoping to lose about 20 more, to be honest, because I'm, I'm getting to a weight that I'm, I haven't been at in a long time. And I like the feeling of this. I do. And it all is attributed to, uh, mental well-being i'm not i'm not depressed anymore i've gotten that process out of my way so i'm not you know eating junk food and you know medicating myself with food wow and that was part of the problem right so you you go in canada and you pick up a you know bag of potato chips or you go out for poutine and just like the food it's just so full of preservatives and so much garbage that it just was just not healthy. And that, that, that had to add to my mental state too. It's like when you put that kind of poison in your system for day after day after day after day. And I'm just talking preservatives. Because that in itself is bad enough. Let alone all the other crap we put in our bodies back home. But here, I go to the market and I get produce that was farmed on the, like freshly farmed here, get meat that was farmed fresh. Like everything here is local and I love it. And I don't buy a bunch of processed foods from back home. Like I don't, like I can get Western foods here, but I, just, I choose not to. Whew. Okay. Wow, okay. Lay's Goose, I've been to over 40 countries. There are always pros and cons, and there are, by all means. You, you're 100% correct. Um, can you survive over there until you hit 60 and start getting that C CPP? Yeah, I think I can. Um, I uh, Once I get the visa sorted out, I'm going to get a business visa here, and uh, that'll allow me to start teaching. And then, yeah, I can stay indefinitely once I get that. Frank Kinsera, the weight loss is night and day. Notice your channel pic and you're changed so much. Super happy for you. Yeah, I'm gonna have to change my channel picture. <laughs> and the funny thing was, is that was on a really good day. I was in a good mood. Like I'd been on a really long, nice walk and like I was having a good day back home in Canada. And so I loved the picture for that, but yeah. Um, Ooh, Maddo's Adventures. When I used to go eat with friends, everyone had to put their phones face down on the tables. The first whoever picks up the phone pays for everyone. I love that concept. I, I would never have to pay for a meal because I know everybody I know back home would just be on their phones. Uh, Dave, 
Notice that too, you can see the weight dropping off the face. Yeah, that's that's the funny thing. Uh, there's two, I, I mean, I, it's my body, so I'm, I'm not afraid to admit it. <clears throat> so the face for sure. Um, I'm gonna have to thin out my beard because I had it set to a certain width because it fit my face. And now it's too wide for my face. So I need to <laughs> just slim it down. Um, I've also noticed that my, my neck was like a very pronounced jowl underneath. It's like it went from my chin to my the bottom of my neck, now it's up. Um, and the other part is my man boobs. Moobs, um, they're fading away, which is great. I have to uh, start exercising more of my upper body a little bit. That's a, <clears throat> the weight loss is one thing I needed to do to, to help um, mental my mental well-being actually let's since i'm talking about it uh, i'll take you guys up to um the gym there is a gym i'm going to be going to here it's outdoors it's going to take me a few minutes to get there so i don't know why i said that oh i know why i said that way because i was going to sign off on the, the stream and go get groceries oh i guess we just have a longer stream today i'm okay with this if it's working, people are still interested in watching. Oh my God, that is so good. It is, oh, sorry. It is so tasty. Who would have ever thought that coffee on ice would be an amazing beverage, but they do it right here. That's the other thing too, the coffee in Cambodia is delightful. Way better than back home. And yes, I'm talking to any of you Tim addicts back home. That's not coffee. I don't know what it is. But yeah, I haven't had the... Yeah, I haven't had regular cream in months. Um, I, I've had sweetened condensed milk or evaporated milk in some of my coffees, especially in Thailand. And there's a coconut coffee that I get. And I get that... Uh, it's been a week and a half. So once every week or two, it's very sweet and it's very, de it's, it's delectable, but it's also very dangerous. Hello, I'm good. Um, check this out. <laughs> you ever see people polishing sidewalks back home? <laughs> and this is a sidewalk. Mind you, this is out in front of a nice building. But they're just taking care of things. Hello. Okay. I think we're good. Boop, boop, boop. Come on, we can do this. There we go. Whew, camera's hot today. Um, Okay, it wasn't at me. <laughs> oh man. Uh, is there enough shade here? Yeah, we should be okay. Should be okay. Uh, so yeah, so part of my diet is this, right? So, uh, just a coffee, no sugar, no cream. Um, Usually it's one a day. Every now and again it's two. Um, if my dude's available, then I will grab like a rice snack thing and that will be my breakfast and lunch because I'll have one, one meal with my coffee. Um, when I get home after this, I'm going to probably make myself an oatmeal and I'll put some fresh bananas in it and call it a day. And that is a half, half a cup of oats. And then I cook it with uh, water and coconut milk. And then uh, banana. So I, I do get my carbs that way for that. And then I will have uh, a meal in the evening. And lately that has been uh, either like a curried noodle thing that I make or I make an omelet. That's uh, with the duck eggs and uh, 
bunch of veggies, sprouts, and all that. Kind of like, um, I remember, I used to just call it like a Chinese omelet when I worked in uh, Chinese restaurants. Uh, you, you can get an omelet back in Canada in Chinese restaurants, and it's like bean sprouts and meat, and then they put this gravy all over top of it. So I make a similar thing to that, minus the gravy. Um, and it's just a couple of duck eggs. And again, I use uh, coconut milk on everything here. That's my dairy, is coconut milk. I use it for anything I do, but like I'm not eating a bunch of like processed pastas or I haven't had much rice except when I eat out because I don't have a rice cooker. <laughs> and it's too hot to, uh, to make anything in my kitchen. So I try to do things really quick and easy. So a lot of simpler meals for sure. Okay, what did I lose my chat? Are we still good? Ah, <clears throat> uh, okay. <laughs> okay, uh, my apologies, because I've been yakking and not paying attention. Uh, I guess here, at dinner there's a medical emergency and you're like, can't pick up or else I'm paying for dinner. Uh, yes, that would be me. Um, MIK, you're a bit of an inspiration for all those watching. I'm wondering, can I afford it? Should I do it? Yeah, I, I, I'm not, I wasn't planning on being an inspiration for anybody. I was just wanting to see if I could do this for myself. Um, you know, if it happens to inspire others to take a chance on themselves and just to uh, pack up and get the fuck out, go for it. Because, um, like I said, I'm not going to lie about it. I was a miserable mess back home in Canada. I was... I hated my job, I hated my life. I was uh, a hermit living inside, afraid to go outside because if I didn't have a mask on, I felt like, like I was, I, I was a mess. Like I was a complete mess. And uh, I've been able to get over myself. And that's the biggest thing is like, it's, it's, it was me. Like I'm not saying, you know, Canada did anything to me. It was me, my state of mind. I was not in a happy place. And uh, everything just seemed to be compounding on top of my head all the time. And like I was, I was not happy before the pandemic. I was way unhappy during the pandemic and even worse after. So yeah, it kind of sucked. <clears throat> uh, cooking coffee. Have I seen rodents in CM Reap? Uh, you have a phobia of rats. Lots of cities in Asia have rat issues. Um, no, I have not seen any. Um, in Thailand, in Bangkok, I saw a few. I haven't seen any here. Um, <clears throat> I have seen a lot of lizards in the apartments and stuff, but I like those because like they're little little dudes that come and eat the bugs. So like I'm, if somebody wants to come in and eat the bugs for me. Have at it. Enjoy yourself. Um, but yeah, I haven't seen, I haven't seen any critters really. You know, I'm trying to think. Dogs. I see dogs. I don't think I've seen many cats. And definitely no rodents. Um, but yeah, mostly lizards, and that's it. Like it's pretty calm here now I know that there are like more rodents out in the country and stuff so but I haven't seen any here again it could be the area that I'm in you know I am living in a fairly modern building and you know I tend to spend a lot of times in you know areas where mostly Western people tend to be but Love these little coffee shops on the side of the road here. Okay, we're closing in on my gym. Whew, it's starting to get warm, folks. And if you're curious as to why I'm not on the phone with Chad all the time, um, 
I, I mentioned my phone's pretty decent, but it also gets really hot. Uh, not because it's doing the Wi-Fi hotspot, but anytime I'm running, um, running it outside, I, the phone's from Canada, so it uh, it's a decent enough phone. But I find that here, and not just in Cambodia, but also when I was in Thailand, it would get hot all the time. Um, in Bangkok, man, it would just be like a furnace in my back pocket. Um, I think the 5G on it really heats up your phone. Like, I got no actual knowledge of that fact, but all I know is a 5G signal there would make my phone 10 to 15 degrees hotter than it is here. Easy. Oh, well, if you're wondering why, a little bit of traffic this morning. It's so funny, the camera shows everybody spaced out when I look at it. It's just like a mishmash of cars. That wider angle definitely makes a big difference. We're getting there. Stand here in the sun's great. Love it. I think we're good. There we go. Whoo, okay. Hotness. We're at 69 minutes. <laughs> nice. I had to do it, I had to do it. I am a child, after all. So yeah, going. I, I find these are about an hour or, or so, which is amazing. Okay, so we are up by, what I term is just the Royal Gardens here. So, if you've seen any of the videos, this is a, I would say like the top of the, the like the downtown area like you can, there are stores and stuff up this way but most of the things are down that way so but uh, if you were paying attention to the videos that I had when I was uh, out here for the rave I was just out here uh, I'll take you guys up to where that was but this is the gym I'm gonna come out and start working out on I'm gonna come out here in the evenings once it gets to like in the mid 30s the low 30s in the evening instead of the high 30s but this is here available for everybody and it's just using your own body weight and people come out here all the time to use it so and i dig the concept of it but i figure using this and the walking it's always using it here in the shade dedication that I don't have. So yeah, here is the uh, the area that I was wandering around in. So I'm trying to think. So I think that right ahead of me is the splash area. Yeah. Wow. Because these if you see the trees with the colors on them, for the I think they look just like Christmas trees, but that's just me. But this is the street that I was walking on with the foam the other day. Yeah, right here. This is where all the foam was. <laughs> I had no idea this was the main street. Wow. Wow. Whew, okay. Need to get back into some shade. Yeah, I'm starting to feel the heat again, which is great. And we can wander here. Uh. Yeah, I'm gonna head back down to get some uh, groceries to the old market. I just need to pick up a couple little things I'm running out of. Uh, I need onions, and I need noodles, and I need some pork, so. Not a whole lot, a couple bucks. 
I got uh, 15,000 real, should cover that. Left over from my coffee. Okay, and again, chat's gone. Why? Don't forget monkeys. I haven't seen any monkeys, Frank and Sarah. Not one. Um, you see any rodents? That's why you think I'm awesome, Sean. You're walking the walk. I guess. I appreciate that. Um, all I'm doing is just trying to live a lifestyle and live within my means. That's all I'm really trying to do. Trying to be simple, basic, and uh, try to leave a, a small footprint so that I don't impact too much around me. You know? I don't drive a car. I don't have all that crap going on. and Somebody's burning. What the hell? That's definitely a wood smoke smell. And it's gone. I think it was from over here. Probably doing something, yeah. Boop, 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 boop. A little bit, a little bit of Bernie. That's what I was smelling. Uh, okay. Uh, when you want to live long term, you should Try to make Cambodian friends. They can show you around, be on tourist areas, or see re beautiful ro provinces. By all means, that is uh, a house. That is absolutely something I am planning on doing. Um, I tend to make friends when I work, and so um, there's a couple of things that I'm planning on doing. I'm going to be taking a couple of art classes. I'm looking into taking some yoga and cooking classes. So. I figure it's a way to meet like-minded people and then I can kind of expand my uh, beyond that because right now I befriended a couple of expats and uh, which is great but I want to learn a bit more from the locals um, and my landlord's nice she's really pleasant so I have uh, chats with her on a regular basis at least once or twice a week and so she fills me in on a lot of the stuff um, and also, I'm pretty chatty whenever I go out, and I ask a lot of questions when I'm, you know, shopping for stuff, so. Um, how am I finding a language barrier? I don't have an issue here. Um, <clears throat> so in Siem Reap, a lot of what they do here is tourist-based, right? So, um, and very European in essence. So a lot of the people here speak English. Um, basic things, there are times that I'll run into something that is foreign. I just translate it on my phone. Like it's, um, but I found in Bangkok, I would be pulling my phone out four or five times a day to do translations. Here, it's once or twice a week. So um, I don't have any issues. Uh, it sucks in one essence because I want to learn more of the language here, but when people want to talk to me in English, it's kind of like, Ur. so. Um, AJ Puzzle Fair, lizards in the apartments, awesome. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, and they're little tiny lizards, man. And uh, so in Florida, we used to have these little geckos, like these little dudes, and they would run. And uh, I was used to their energy. And these ones are kind of like, similar like the way that they scurry but they seem like they are like almost like a pasty like a greenish white color they're like the, it, they feel like an albino version of the gecko back in florida but again florida you're used to lizards so you kind of accept them they eat the bugs and uh they keep your place you know i don't have issues with with bugs so i'm happy uh, it's like crossing the 401 back there. Yes, you're very much right, um, except safer. <laughs> oh man, I don't miss the 401 at all. Um, Frank and Sarah, safe travels today. I really hope you guys uh, have a good day there. 
I'm sure we'll be catching up later anyway. Um, Meadows Adventures, thank you for coming in. Wow, there's still 16 people here. You guys rock. This is amazing. Absolutely amazing. I'm good, thank you. So, 77 minutes. I'm gonna put the phone back in my back pocket for a second, a sip of coffee. So I'm uh, headed back down towards the old market. Um, I will stop before I get there because I know historically that my phone data stops down there. I do, want, do not want to torment you guys with a stuttery mess of a live stream. But, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm happy today. <laughs> it's funny. I, I, I don't, I love doing, like, I love making videos. I love doing live streams. So it's, you know, I, I don't want this to come the wrong way. But uh, over the weekend, doing those four videos, or five videos, actually, for... Uh, on the New Year's celebration was really exhausting. Um, it was a different schedule. So I usually go out in the mornings and I film leisurely. Uh, you know, it's not too crowded, not too busy. The areas that I like to walk in are like this. But during the festivities, the normal areas where I was going are full of people. <laughs> And so during the day, I couldn't, I, I, I was out of my element the whole time. So I would film at night. And then because I was trying to get that content out for the next morning here, instead of waiting and saying, okay, you know, day one, posting it on day two, I was still posting it on day one. So I was, I had expedited my timeline. So I was pumping out a lot of content um, with a shorter turnaround time. And I no regrets for doing it. It was a lot of fun to do. But for a better part of that week there, I had changed my, my patterns. And uh, I drained my reserves. So took a couple days off. Uh, today, right now, it's Friday morning. So I know this is Thursday night for you folks back home. So the celebrations here ended Tuesday and so Tuesday night was my last one so I did Wednesday and Thursday off I didn't do deadly but I still had a bunch of stuff to do um, like a lot of the things that I put off doing I had to you know doing the visa stuff and getting my bike fixed and other things so um, that all happened yesterday I uh, done I was so exhausted and I was planning on doing something but it just like I, I couldn't g get any motivation so uh, and the heat has just become kind of oppressive during the uh, afternoons so hello I'm good I'm very good thank you um, so yeah the heat's become a little oppressive in the afternoons so uh, I went and saw a movie yesterday and I think I might do that again today <laughs> I don't know, just a nice break, getting out, um, you know, getting into some AC and just sitting there and not doing anything. I went and saw Civil War, uh, which was an eye-opening experience. Um, what I appreciated about that movie was the fact that it did not take a side. It showed just what needed to be showed, which is the atrocities of hatred and war. Didn't matter which side it came from. And that's what I really appreciated is it showed both sides of the coin of like, yeah, on, you, you give people the ability to become awful. And if they take advantage of it, this is what can happen. And uh, it, was a, it was a tough movie. It, it, like I appreciated it for what it was. But it was definitely a hard movie to uh, when I left. Especially because some of the songs in it, I really like the music, so I'm bopping around and I'm like, I shouldn't be enjoying this. <laughs> but um, I'm glad I saw it. Uh, 
I went down to the Cineplex, which is down here. Um, there was like, when the movie started, there was like four people besides myself in there. And then once the credits, like uh, once, sorry, all of the trailers and stuff stopped, uh, I, like another 15, 20 people showed up. So I think they've got it sorted out. They know <laughs> it's like, yeah, I don't want to watch trailers. <laughs> so, but yeah, it was a good turnout for it. Um, but yeah, it was a, it was a tough movie. But it uh, definitely resonated with me, especially considering, you know, everything I was experiencing when I left Canada was like there's a, a, lot, a lot more hatred in the air, so to speak. Ooh. Manual, try to walk to Angkor and back. It's a nice walk. Angkor Tom. I, I will take a look into that, by all means. Uh, live stream save on upload and editing time. Keep them as content and vids on your channel. That's kind of what I do. Um, for sure. Because I find that um, on my off days, you know, when I was putting out my shorts, I found that if I do a live stream, it's much more effective for me, for the content I want for my channel. Um... My shorts were doing pretty well. You know, I would get a few hundred to a few thousand views on most shorts. Um, it was not uncommon for them to get up to 2,000 views, which is great. But when they're 15 seconds long, um, there's not a ton of engagement with that. And so, like, to monetize your channel, you have to have a certain amount of subscribers and you have to have a certain amount of hours viewed. And the shorts view time does not count towards your overall view time. They, they count that separately, which I find pathetic. Um, and also, like, you need to get like millions of views on your shorts in order for them to register with YouTube. So. It just seemed like an uphill battle for me that I didn't want to, I didn't want to get into. Um, you know, YouTube is pushing towards these shorts so much, but the rewards for it was negligible for me. So I thought, you know what, I got the option to do live streams. Let's just do those because it's more my style. So I've now stopped shorts entirely. And I'm just making long form content because I just, yeah, I would much rather have this growth on this kind of content than shorts. And I also find that uh, the people that are watching my content are different. So shorts tend to have a younger crowd watching it. These videos tend to have an older crowd. The majority of my viewership is over 35. Uh, I think like 30% is over 60. So shorts are geared towards the younger demographic. So if the majority of my, my viewership are older and they're watching long form content, why would I put out short form content for people that are not gonna come back and watch my long form content and vice versa? It was like having two channels. So I just, I made the executive decision to, to end shorts, so, which is fine. Like I said, I was not feeling them anyway. Uh, when I first started the channel, I was doing one video a week, and then I was doing shorts to fill in the gaps. And for that, it was great, because it gave me something to do. You know, I started to learn what I wanted to do with the channel, so it was fine at that point. But, uh, yeah. I, I think I might still do some shorts, but I'll just post those over on Instagram or on TikTok. Which, I, I now have Instagram, but I haven't done diddly with it. I usually turn up for the trailers, like, sit there. Um, yeah, I, I like movie trailers too, AJ Puzzle Ferret. Um, I do. I do, I do, I do. Uh, there was a couple movies that I saw that looked interesting. Uh, the Fall Guy. I didn't know anything about that. I remember the TV show. 
but I didn't know that they were doing a, uh, a movie adaptation. It looked okay. It was not a, uh, you know, high on my list. It, it's going to be one of those. It's two dollars and fifty cents to go see a movie, and they have the Fall Guy. I'm going to go see it. So it's not going to be one of those. Okay, it's twenty bucks to go see a movie. What am I going to go see? It's the I don't care. I'm going to pay two fifty to go and have air conditioning for a couple of hours. So that's that. That's my mindset. Okay. Whew, okay, so I think I'm going to pause and end things here. Um, I'm sure the camera is just getting stupid, stupid hot. I'm getting stupid hot. <laughs> so in the morning, there's a bit of a breeze that kind of dies down and it comes, it's still here, but it's warmer. And so, and the humidity seems to pick up a little bit. Or it could be the fact that I'm just walking and talking and being outside for a longer period of time. But I'm, if you can see, I'm sweating on my hands. Like, that's gross. I'm damp, I'm moist. But anyway, um, I do want to thank everybody for coming out, hanging out for me during this uh, live stream today. Appreciate it. Uh, like I was mentioning, I was tired and wasn't really feeling like doing energy things today. And I'm like, oh, it's been a week since you've done a live stream, Sean, shut up. Just do it. And I like when I talk to myself like that because it forces me to do these things. It's like, you know, shut up and go out and enjoy the uh, festival. And I do, and I have a blast. And shut up and go out and have fun doing a live stream. And I do, and I have a blast. So I like the adult side of me that tells me what to do every now and again. Sometimes he's a clutchy old bastard, but it's okay. Anyway, I'm going to uh, end things here. Hope you guys enjoy the stream. Hope you guys have fun. Hope you guys take care. I will try to do another one this weekend, which will be Saturday night uh, back home in Canada, Eastern time zone, uh, or Sunday morning here if you are in Southeast Asia. But anyway, uh, if you do like my content, please feel free to like, comment, share, subscribe. If you are still here and you haven't liked it yet, please, please, I would appreciate it if you could. Uh, I do set these streams to go live on YouTube so that, uh, you know, 